So we are going to continue through induction today, but particularly the kind of induction we're going to do are called first order, which um, is not a Star Wars reference, and um, first order recursive formulas. So before we get into any of the induction stuff, we need to know what these things are, okay? We'll come to first order in a second. Um, this is the key word here, recursive. Do either of you do software design by any chance? You do? Okay, yes. It's all right if you don't, um, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume sort of, you know, we'll go from this, but you might be familiar with recursion already from software design. The whole idea of something that's recursive is, it's a formula that kind of refers to itself which is a little bit weird, but you've actually encountered these before. So let me give you the most famous, famous recursive formula that you've encountered before. I'm gonna write it, and then I wonder if you can tell me actually what it is, and there are some significant clues here, right? So this is the formula. Before I explain kind of what it actually gives us, right? The whole idea here is there's some formula for whatever capital F is, but to define a particular, the nth capital F, you've got to know what the previous one and the one before that were. So it's kind of like referring to itself, and that's this recursion idea. Do you know what capital F is? Fibonacci. It's the Fibonacci sequence, right? So in order to work out, you actually have to define a couple of numbers to start with, and we generally start with one and one. And then you say, well, okay, if, uh, if I've got one and one, then the next one is going to be, you add them together, you get two, then one plus two equals three, two plus three equals five, and off you go, right? So there's this idea here that you have to start somewhere, just define some numbers. And by the way, you don't have to define them as one and one. Um, you can start at two and one, and you get the Lucas sequence, which is actually really interesting. It's more interesting than Fibonacci sequence, which is weird, because everyone knows about Fibonacci. No one knows who Lucas is. Anyway, we can get to that another time. Um, but the key thing is it refers to itself, okay? Um, I've got a few other examples here, um, ones that you actually are also familiar with. So. Let's think about this one. Now, we know what the factorial sequence is. Good morning, how are you, Michelle? Now, obviously we could say this as, <clears throat> say for example, if I asked you what five factorial was, you would tell me it's 120 as a, as a whole thing, but how did you calculate 120? Where did it come from? Uh, one times two times three times four times five. Right, so you start from one, and then you keep just going up in integers, multiplying until you get to n, right? So that is what we would call an explicit formula. It just kind of lays out the entire thing, but there's a way to describe the factorial in a more succinct way, but it, it has to refer to itself. So we would say, okay, just take that number and then multiply it by the previous factorial. Does that make sense? Now, this is, it's more succinct, but you're like, well, in order to work out this one, I had to know the previous one. However, I can say, oh, six factorial without going one times two times three. If I already know what five factorial is, like you just told me, I'm like, okay, it'll be six times five factorial, 720, off I go, right? Okay, let me give you one more. I got one more example here. Oh yeah, fantastic. Um, however, I'm not sure if you're up to this one yet. You finished the whole advanced course, but have you done series and sequences yet? No, no. Not yet, that's fine, that's okay. I'm just gonna introduce this one for you. So for example, um, if we were going to say um, a, a progression of numbers, right, and then the numbers just go up by the same difference every time. So this is what we call an arithmetic progression. You'd say, okay, to get to one term, you would go from the previous term, and then you just add whatever that common difference is. So for example, the odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, nine, right? Well, you just go from one term and then you just add two would be what gets you from one term to the next. But you actually don't have to have a gap of two. You could have a gap of anything. We just call that the common difference, okay? So again, the key thing is, and you can see it every time, right? N minus one, N minus one, N minus one. You're looking backwards, right? So that's this idea of recursion. Okay, other color. Now we can understand what this part means. First order, okay. These are all recursive formulas here, but two of them are first order and the other one is not. The whole idea is how complicated is this? How, how far do I have to go back, okay? So do you notice for these two formulas, right, you only have to go one step back, n minus one, n minus one. So for each of these, we would call them first order because 
you only need to know the previous one term, okay? The Fibonacci sequence though, because you have to go two back, we would call that <coughs> second order. So, thankfully for us, um, <coughs> excuse me, the extension to syllabus uh, explicitly excludes these. You actually can work them out using, in some ways, many of the same tools I'm going to introduce to you for these. Um, but they're just, they're just more work because they're second order. Okay? So we're going to stay in this territory down here. Now, the whole idea is that these are recursive formulas, but if I wanted an explicit <coughs> formula, then I would need to prove that an explicit formula works. These are kind of like the definitions of each of them. Um, there is actually, for example, an explicit formula for the Fibonacci sequence, but almost no one encounters it because it's weird. It's, it's strange because we know 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. All of the Fibonacci numbers are whole numbers, which makes sense because you just get them by addition, right? However, weirdly, the explicit formula for the Fibonacci sequence, it's got like weird surds in it. It's got the golden ratio. It's very strange, okay? Um, and you might think like, where did that even come from? Where do any of the explicit formulas come from? We can use induction to prove them. So as an example, say with this one here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull on you for this one, Ryan. Do you know what the explicit formula is for the nth term yes. of an AP? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. Now, let's just, even if you haven't done this, it's a simple idea. You start at some first number. So we said the odd numbers would start from one, usually. Um, and then you add some number of the differences, right? So if I wanted to get to the seventh odd number, we would start from one. And then we would add a lot of twos, because that's how you progress each time from one odd number to the next. So if I said to get to the seventh one, you'd add six lots of that common difference, which would be, what is that? That's six times two, which is 12. So we'd say, oh, there you go. There's the seventh odd number. So this is an explicit formula. You can see it doesn't rely on knowing the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth odd numbers. I can go straight there. But how do I actually prove that this is the case? And this is where induction comes in, okay? So here's the way I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna give us some examples of this, but I'm gonna do something which <laughs> you know how I said this is not in the syllabus, right? I'm going to show you a thing that's not in the syllabus. So don't freak out. You're like, how am I going to have to do this in an exam? The first thing is something you're not going to have to do in the exam. However, hopefully I'll be able to convince you, persuade you why it's actually worth having a look at this morning. Okay. 